Fast and Furious Highway Heist. When I learned about the existence of this game, I was very, very excited because I am a big fan of the Fast and Furious franchise, so I, I had to play it. I was also excited when I saw that it is by Prospero Hall, a studio of game designers that has an excellent track of making games based on famous franchises that do capture the theme and the feel of their subjects, so hooray! The game is cooperative as a game based on Fast and Furious should be, because it is all about friendship and family and working together against evil, and the turning your enemies of one movie into allies of the next movie, so that's, that's fun stuff. The game comes with three scenarios. In one, we're gonna try to take down a tank. In another one, we're fighting against a helicopter and an armor car. In another one, we are stealing cargo from a truck. The scenario never tells you what the cargo is, but we know it is just DVD players. We do know that. So, the game, uh, regardless of the scenario, always takes place on this board here. And no, it's not like Thunder Road in which you need then to transfer pieces of, uh, of the board from one side to the other as the cars move. The game basically represents relative movement. So if this is the situation at the beginning of the turn, and this is still the situation at the end of the turn, it doesn't mean that nobody moved, but that everybody's running is driving probably a million miles an hour against the laws of physics and that's what we love fast and furious everybody's driving really really fast but still at the same relative distance if this is the situation then this car moved a little faster and this one also suddenly went faster and this one moved in front of that one and so on and so forth so you have to imagine the road is moving really fast under the vehicles just going the opposite direction as they go in that other direction there. So in each scenario you will have a main enemy vehicle, in this case it is the tank, and then a number of SUVs. You also may have noticed the, these sticks here that are on top of the SUVs, but there are also holes for such sticks on top of other vehicles, including the player's vehicles, and they represent people on top of the of the vehicles, because it ain't fast and furious if people are not climbing on top of cars and trucks and anything that moves and running and jumping and do all sorts of fun and crazy stuff. So that each player also has a similar stick of the same color as their car, when this is next to you in your personal play area, it means that uh, your driver, the one that you control in the game, is behind the wheel. And when the stick is placed on the board, it means that now uh, you are on top of the vehicle or maybe jumping onto other vehicles and doing different things, but you're not there. The game is a little vague about why your car keeps going in the same direction. Is there a friend there that's helping you? Um, the car has some sort of semi self-driving mechanisms. You're told that the car drifts slowly back, but still. Uh, but that's okay. We don't watch Fast and Furious movies as, as their documentaries and we don't play the game uh, looking for, for extreme realism. So each game, each scenario will come with different components, same board by different components. Again, with a player aid here telling you different things. You'll place a cube here, in this case, to record the strength of the tank. In this scenario, you're going to try to push these uh, SUVs under the tank that damages it and that reduces the damage, uh, the, the, the health, the strength of the tank. If it falls off, if the cube falls off on this side, you reduce the strength of the tank to zero, then you win the game. But you don't have a whole lot of time. There's a deck of stunt cards here. One is revealed uh, each turn, and when a new one is then revealed, uh, the previous one slides, and another one goes there. There are only three slots. Uh, after a while, some of these stunt cards will be moved off to make room for other ones and when these are all gone 
the game is over. So the stunt deck also represents your timer. And you can alter the difficulty, the level of challenge of the game precisely by removing a number of cards on the deck so you have less time to complete to complete your challenge, complete the general task. The stunt cards are good for you because they give you an opportunity to collect rewards. Basically, they each describe what it is that the stunt card allows you to do, what kind of stunt you're trying to pull off, the condition that uh, will trigger that stunt. So you're gonna try to place your people and your vehicles uh, to match that condition, uh, the challenge that you may have to pass, and then the reward that you collect which can be uh, different different things now as for our uh, one actually one last thing since we're talking about say the, the things on the board we talk about before we talk about the drivers each scenario also have a deck of enemy cards from time to time game effects will tell you to draw a new enemy card when it's drawn you resolve the section of the card that, that is on top so you simply do what it says which is usually bad stuff new suvs are coming the, the tank moves around and slams into your car also the bad stuff and then you place the card there when another enemy card arrives we do that and when another enemy card arrives you do that and uh oh bad thing when a card is moved under the activate slot of the enemy board then we resolve that effect also. So you have unpredictable events that come out of the deck and are resolved immediately, and then events that you can foresee, you know that they will happen, uh, you don't know exactly when, but uh, you know that they're coming, and so you can plan accordingly. Now each player will control an iconic hero from the Fast and Furious franchise, and will also drive a car. Otherwise, what kind of Fast and Furious situation is this one? And so we have well-known uh, people like Brian, Roman, Tej, Han, Dom, and Letty. And the art, I, I, I like the style of art, especially for the vehicles, so, so for the action scenes, uh, again, the cars, it just looks pretty cool and dynamic. Not totally sold on, on human figures here. Uh, Brian, to me, just looks like the Joker without makeup. Um, they just, I don't know. Uh, Tej, Tej and Han, actually, you know, they kind of somehow capture the character, uh, the actor, of course. Dom kind of looks like he put, like, cotton balls in his mouth trying to to look like, like Dom Corleone. Uh, so, not too crazy about it, but that's okay. But suppose that we have Letty. All right. Love her. Now, each driver will need a car to drive, and we have different cars that do different things. Also, these characters are not just differentiated by the portrait and the name, but also by special abilities. Each character has a unique ability. And so suppose that we're giving this car to Letty. Look at that. Oh, oh, they come together like that. That's like magic. How can they design the kind of stuff? And you place the stick here to indicate that Letty right now is behind the wheel. You're also going to place a cube there to indicate that the, the health of the car, the center of the car, when the car takes damage, it goes down. Letty later may hijack an SUV, in which case you flip that to that side, but the SUV is not nearly as good as the original car, which also have a special power and also has a number of icons. So uh, your stats for the game will be a sum of the icons that you find on the character card plus the ones that you find on the car. So Letty, driving the import racer, has a speed of 4, control of 4, athletics of 2, and defense of 2. If she was driving the exotic supercar, da -da -da -da, da -da -da, da -da -da -da, she would have a defense of three, for example. So, like that. All right, we are almost ready from room to start. One last concept is actions. During the game, you will take actions, and many actions will require a test. And here you have a nice reminder of what kind of tests the actions require. When you take a test, the tests are the actions that have that number in a sort of like line background. When you take an action that requires a test, 
First, you collect a number of dice equal to your stat. If I'm taking a con test requires control, in this case, I'm Letty, and I have four dice. If it's a test that requires athletics, two dice. Speed, four dice. So you collect the required number of dice. Suppose that I'm trying to force the action of forcing, then I'm using control for that. I take the required dice. Control, again, is force. It's four. I roll the dice. And I'm looking at the dots. Each dot count as one. I need to have a number of dots equal to or higher than the difficulty of the test. So right now that would be a failure, but if I rolled at least three dots, that would be a success. But you see those symbols, they're called boost symbols in the game. I wish they called them Nitro. Again, more faithful to the franchise. Those symbols are usually blank. Imagine they're not there, they don't do anything. Unless you spend a boost token, in which case you count them as, success, as successes, as dots. Another thing that captures the uh, cooperative nature of the franchise is that uh, you can spend the boost tokens out of turn to help other people. So you spend your boost tokens and they get two extra dice when it's time to take that, to take their test. So the general idea, once you know this, you're pretty much ready to go, is that each turn, uh, players will alternate taking turns. During a player's turn, that player can take up to two actions. The actions can be to drive, as simple as that. That does not require a, a test. You simply move up to the number of space, a number of spaces equal to your speed. You can move diagonally, you can get in front of people, etc. 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 You can take uh, the force action to uh, relocate, to relocate other cars, SUVs, uh, usually SUVs, you want to push them in front of the tank, you want to do bad stuff uh, that way. So, so force allows you to move other cars, uh, again, between uh, getting in the way and just against your, your amazing strength of will. Shaking, it means that there is somebody on top of your vehicle that may be bad because it may be affected and then cause that that stick to damage your vehicle. The shake action whee, allows you to get them out. Brawl is when you are not on your vehicle and you're fighting against, against somebody. Hijack an enemy SUV. Again, under circumstances, you may have to leave your car and hijack that. You can also choose to take a boost token, simply collect it, just as simple as that. But in order to do so, that has to be your last action for the turn. You can't use a boost token and then take another action. It doesn't seem like many actions, and honestly, of those two actions, uh, oh, I forgot, of course, the super important mega actions, uh, which is leap, which is, again, when you jump from one card to the other. Frankly, I would say 80% maybe the actions that you take are drive and force. So it may look like there's all the variety, but when the other actions strike, they're very important. Leaping to punch somebody in the face, so leap and brawl, very important stuff. Plus you get all these other actions. You remember these? All these other actions, you perform a stunt. They are pretty spectacular. Also by performing a stunt, you get to collect a boost token. When a stunt is placed on the board, you place a token there so that you collect it when you perform the stunt. So as you can see, there was a lot of preliminary concepts, but ultimately it's you perform two of those actions, a lot of those will be force and brawl, plus there will be other special actions based on the scenario. If Ramsey is in a car and the uh, chopper is targeting her with missiles, then you start throwing Ramsey from one car to another. She doesn't like it, but keeps her alive. After, for example, just to give you a sense of the variety of actions you can have when you add the stunts and when you add, add the unique actions of these scenarios. After the active player took one or two actions, uh, then the active player rolls a die, which is the enemy die. And based on the symbols, then different things happen. It may be that the SUVs move, trying to ram cars that are adjacent to them. If no car is adjacent to them, they move towards the car of the active player. Uh, people on top of vehicles, so they are going to try to reach your vehicle and damage it. Uh, the 
main enemy may move north, for example, of course being rammed by a tank is not always fun, or may move south on the board. And the skull that you've seen often indicates those enemy cards that I showed you earlier. Draw one and then also again those cards will move and they, when they reach the activate area you also have the negative effect. So really the game adjusts itself based on the number of players because no matter how many uh, drivers you have on the board as one driver goes then an enemy turn one player one enemy turn and so on and so forth. Continue like this, uh, alternating your turns and enemy turns, two actions when it's your turn, drive, do stunts, do crazy stuff, continue like this until either you complete the objectives of the scenario or, well, something bad happens and you lose the game. Well, I love the Fast and Furious franchise, I just love those movies and it's hard to find, in a sense, other experiences that give you that sense, give you that feeling of immersion. We play games so with strong themes because we want to be there, we want to live the fantasy there where we are inhabiting these fictional worlds. And so a couple of months ago I played this video game Fast and Furious, I think it was called Crossroads. Oh my gosh, so boring, so glah. So I'm happy that now I do have a game that feels like Fast and Furious. I hope there will be expansions for this game because I think it can be done. It just need uh, some cards, I need some boards there uh, to, and some miniatures um, or at least or maybe full sets with sequels because I think it's a solid system. Um, it's probably the most complex game that I've seen from Prospero Hall uh, and because they tend to specialize in games that are a little lighter, a little more casual. And you see you you see their games in big department stores and people that are not gamers like you and I just pick them off the shelf. And I think this game may feel a little confusing for somebody who is not um, who is not well versed with the level of complexity that we come to expect from modern hobby gaming. But again, you're watching video reviews, so that means that you are not a casual player of games, and I think you're not gonna have any problem here. Um, and you're gonna enjoy then the complexity instead of being disoriented to you will be will be fun because it will mean more choices, more interesting decisions, more spectacular actions because this is what I want when I am interacting with the Fast and Furious universe. I don't care about logic and physics. I know it doesn't work that way. But seeing these ginormous leaps, seeing a car crash into an SUV, seeing it rolling in front of a tank, a car in the in the chopper takedown scenario, the best way to hit the chopper is to turn an SUV into a rack and then use it as a ramp and the car hits the chopper. Perfection. That's what Fast and Furious is supposed to be. No, it's not supposed to be shy and realistic. It's supposed to be over the top, that's what we come to expect from the movies, especially starting from 4 and 5, 5 even more than 4, 5 to me is the real turning point. And, it's, and, and the game captures that. The game captures that over-the-top, crazy action. Um, and it does it beautiful, I believe. I like that it's cooperative because, again, it captures the strong sense of family and loyalty, which is at the core of the movies. It also allows me to play solitaire when my kids are not around because uh, I also play with my kids and, and they also loved it, especially my daughter, Louisa, who is really into cars and, and this kind of like crazy fictional, fun, over-the-top, cartoonish violence. And so, of course, this game was perfect. She was just enjoying, you know, pushing SUVs in front of, of, of tanks just as much as, as, as I did. Um, and I'll tell they mentioned this scenario because it may just be the one that I like the most. It's the simplest, it's the one that they recommend as the, as the introductory scenario. Um, and the elegant simplicity of this over-the-top crazy action of throwing SUVs at a tank just has a certain elegance and beauty to it that I find very captivating. I also like the chopper takedown. The one where you're stealing DVD players, I know they don't mention that, but we know that's what happened in the original movie when, when our friends were still thieves and all that. Um, it's not just because of that, but somehow, and you have basically to leap on the leap on the truck, and from the truck you're you're throwing cargo to your friends. Um, 
I don't know, I find that maybe a little more railroaded, the action just a little more scripted, with fewer opportunities for really crazy fun stuff. I prefer the other two scenarios in which you are taking down a major vehicle that a car should not be able to take down. But a family that sticks together and drives cars, they should and they can in this game. So you have a fun game, which is again more complex than probably other franchise-based games you have come to expect uh, from Prospero Hall, but nothing that a gamer cannot handle. So really nice flow, nice pace, and ultimately the real point, uh, what can make or break a game of this kind. It is a game about Fast and Furious that does feel like Fast and Furious, and to me that is a great thing. So definitely enjoyable. I enjoyed this game a great deal. I hope there will be more games based on this franchise, based maybe even specific on this engine with different scenarios because I had a great time playing these scenarios and I'd be, I'd be very happy to play more scenarios in the same system.